My latest project is a mirror for one of the, the house bedrooms and um, it, it forms, uh, it's got eight basic components. The main frame here which is all mitered and there's another frame that I'm, I'm moulding. Also uh, four of these goes on the top. And um, when you first look at this you think well it's fairly straightforward and simple but in reality it's not. This, this is uh, this is quite difficult to do. Um, it's easy to do wrong, it's difficult to do right. Um, and to explain that, you've got, um, you've got four mitres, at least four, you've got eight actually, but for this mainframe you've got four mitres, which is eight separate cuts. Uh, so, and also, these are the opposing lengths here. These have to be identical, and these two have to be identical, or the whole thing will not fit together properly. So this, this is quite a, a bit of trouble. Together with that, you've got the two tracks. You must use uh, this track for certain cuts, and then you move it over here to do other, which means you're changing the settings all the time. And uh, th this, is, uh, this could get really tricky. Um, so, you know, I haven't looked into how to do this and I, I thought, well, this is, uh, before when I, when I did it, um, I was always doing one and then changed over to the opposing one and uh, that's all so wrong. So I thought, well, let's simplify this thing. And when I first thought about this idea, I thought it's really not very good. I, just, I didn't think it would work and I was wrong. It did work. Um, but to, to make it work, there's, there's several things you have to do. First of all, you have to make sure your blade is absolutely vertical to the, the, the table top. Now you can use a, a machinist square, which I've done for years, but I don't really like it because I don't trust the squares for a start. And um, it's, it's difficult to see and difficult to just write. So what, what I do now um, is I use this. This, this is also shown in, on Colin's channel and the, with the Woodwork Web. And what you do is you use a, the, uh, the shop made sled and you, you push it through and take a cut. These two are identical and are, you've got to mark them to keep them in the right position. Put them through and then open up and when you put them on a square surface, just clean the edges and do this. And if it's doing that or this, it's easy to recognise and you can correct it. Um, obviously, the whole point of this is if, you, if you're a one degree out with your blade and you do this and turn it around, you're actually going to be two degrees out, which is easy to recognise and correct. So that's just something you can think about. Um, now, the other things are that it's essential when you're doing this that all widths, thicknesses and lengths are identical. Or it, as I said, it won't work. So uh, we start off by doing top, bottom, left and right and always put these back in the same way. And the other thing to do this system I'm going to show you, I've simplified a wee bit by, by marking each mitre corner. Now I've marked this one, X, this is a short one, uh, marked with an X here, I hope you, hope you can see it. It's an X here. Now the opposing rail which is identical, the the X is up here for the same cut. So there's X here and X up here. And X on this long one here and on the opposing corner here. And then all you need to do is put Y's on the remaining ones. Y, Y, Y and a Y here. Okay, and that's, that's the, the start. Um, now, what we do, what we start off with is this one here. What we're going to do is we're going to simplify this whole process and rather than doing chopping and changing back and forward, we're going to try and minimize it. So you set your, your, your mitre guide to uh, whatever you think is 45, it, it won't be probably, but set it to 45 as close as you can and then take a cut. And after you've done that, check your cut with your Whatever gauge you've got, I've got this gauge here, which is quite good, but it must be, it must be set properly to, to get the right angle. And then you take your angle. And when I did this, um, I finished up. I didn't start off, but I finished up at 44.8 degrees, which is, which is fine. Because if you think about it, if it's 48 or 40, 40, 
4 by 8 or 44.9 you can correct it on the the other the other part of the mitre so you don't have to get 45 degrees exactly you have to what we do have to do is get all the x's the same so what, once you've got this 40 44.8 uh, we can take a cut on all four of the the mitres marked x so that we do all of them the long ones too it's the same way exact same direction take a cut and um, do all four like that all four X's are completed like that now you, you know that you've got four that are identical now what we have to do is get the four opposing uh, angles and the lengths correct uh, so we change over now to the to the opposing track And again, set it up at whatever it says at 45. That's it there. Now, what we do here is, there's your original X there. What we do here is, I'll, I'll use the, I'll use a short one because it's, it's uh, easier to manipulate. So what we do is we set it at 45 and then we take a cut. And now what we do is we take this Y it's here and set it up against the, the side marked X. Take our gauge here and then we, what we want ideally of course is, is 90 degrees. So now we know what has to be, as I said, obviously it's the Y not the X, you don't touch the X, it's the Y. So then you go back, make your adjustments and keep, keep making these cuts until You've got a perfect 90 there. And now we're going to go and do the remainder because they're all identical. So we'll do the remainder of the Y's. And, um, and, and in, the, in this method, we'll show you how I finished up getting the, the X's and Y's. So what we do here is we put the two opposing members together like that. And Going to take these two pieces of identical stock here and we're going to clamp it now I used a C clamp on mine uh, because there's more purchase but this is this is okay uh, doing it this way Now what you do here is you, you go to this X end and you make sure it's absolutely flush. You shouldn't feel an edge. And then when it is, tighten. Make sure it's tilted away from the blade. It's well clear of the blade anyway, but just to make additionally sure. And then take your cut. Take your cut. And now we, we know that all the Y's are the same, so these two Y's here are identical. You take this apart and you do exactly the same with the, with the two Y's on this, these long ones. And uh, when I first did it, I wasn't too enthusiastic. I didn't think it would work, but it did. And, it, and I only needed one correction, which is amazing for all these different uh, abnormal settings. Um, so one correction and I got it. It wasn't perfect, but it was almost perfect, and, and that just amazed me. And uh, as I say, when you put it all together, it's bottom, top, left. Just absolutely ecstatic by the way this turned out. It was virtually perfect. Okay, now perhaps you notice that uh, this uh, I'm going to put three dull holes in each 
uh, miter to for alignment and strength. You don't need too much strength. This could be a mirror or a, a, a picture frame. It doesn't really matter. Um, so there's going to be three delves in there on each corner, and that's going to make it very strong and very accurate. And the same will be done with this top moulding. Um, there'll be a single dowel in each corner, and uh, before I attach it to the to the main framework. And as I said, this really worked out very, very well, and I'm very pleased with it, and just wanted to share. My latest project is the construction and design of a bedroom mirror. It comprises eight sections. That's uh, one main frame with four mitered uh, joints and uh, a, a routed uh, moulding, again in rectangular form, which will go on the outside. Now I'm going to use, uh, this will be dulled, this, this, rout this routed frame will be dulled, as will the four mitres on here. Um, I'm going to use three, three uh, 516 dulls uh, for strength and alignment, and this will be very, very accurate and very strong. So let's get started. Now with a mitre you only require two reference marks because you're going to be using the apex or the inside corner for a reference. So we only need two check marks on these two reference faces or you can use numbers. Sometimes I'll use one round to four for all four corners. Now we'll take this one um, now I'm going to align to the to the to the top here and to this inner corner here and the check mark goes to check mark. Now when you do this alignment here, I just you shouldn't be able to feel any ridge there. And that's, that's it. And I'm going to do one, uh, two, three and four. That's more than enough. And the next one goes on the opposite side of the... I always put the top face to this end so that when I'm putting down mics on I clamp to this end. And once again we do exactly the same, come to this inner corner and just adjust it. That's fine. And once again, we do the three center ones. Now that should be aligned within thousands of an inch. Now we're ready to put the frame together. Uh, one thing to note about this, when, when you're actually gluing and clamping the, to together, you must always clamp like an L shape um, here and here and join them like that because the, the dowels are all going off at 45. So if you try and say join these two here and then put this one together, they're going at different angles. So you, can, you can't do that. So you must remember to do the, this L shape here and then that one, so. Nice snug fitting towels, although the, the glue does take up some.
Very nice. Perfect. Got a belly here, that's great. And that's it finished.